very welcome to today's session. My name is Stephanie Sanchi. I'm the project coordinator of this project that you see on the screen, Bilder der Schweiz Online. Um, and Florian and I will talk through our developments in the last two years and this year, um, give you an insight into what has happened and where we're going. Uh, it's one year since our last presentation, so it's uh, exactly one year. So it's exciting to see and show what we've been doing. Um, title is project of this project is Bilder der Schweiz, online roughly translated as images of Switzerland. And um, we've been running for two years already and we're now in our third year. Um, officially we're terminating at the end of the year, but there might be some leeway there. Uh, we receive funding from the Filman Family Foundation um, and our focus is images of Switzerland. So that means the uh, Swiss landscape or artistic representations of the geographical, artistic, political and imaginary entity that the Swiss landscape is. Um, items that have been created between around 1700 and 1950. The objects that we work with concretely are prints, postcards, drawings, photos, etc. So roughly the category prints and drawings. And our research focus is on one hand, the social networks around the print production, and then also the artist's location, meaning from where have these images been taken or created, drawn, and um, to understand more about their, also their production history. And for that, we're looking to geo-reference some of our images. Here is our team. So our principal investigator is Tristan Wedigen. And then at Sari, we have Thomas Hansley as the project lead, uh, Florian Kreutli and Olga Nikoleva as knowledge graph engineers. Um, I'm the project coordinator. And we also have Martin Bess, who's joining us here today as well um, as our GIS specialist from the uh, initiative snapshot. At the Institute for Art History at the University of Zurich, we have Michel Mathil, who is the project lead from their side. It's the part project two, as I will call it throughout this presentation. And we also have Sophie Gurman, who is um, his assistant. As for our partners, we are working with content from the Zurich Central Library, from the Swiss National Library, uh, also from the Filman family collection itself. And currently, we're also in conversation with the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire, Art and History Museum of Geneva, especially their um, graphic cabinet, their prints and drawings for an additional set of uh, objects that we would like to include. Our partner for the geolocalization workflow, which I already spoke about a little bit, is Snapshot. And you can also see in the background of this graph that the initiative is divided into, or not divided, but contains two parts. Um, so there's SARI on one hand, and there's the Institute for Art History on the other hand, who is also working with public and pedagogic stakeholders and um, planning didactic modules. So I also consider those invisible partners, uh, partners as well, they influence what we do. As for our progress, in 2020, we started with setting the project up. So we looked at requirements, we specified our workflow, we onboarded the collections of the Zurich Central Library, the Swiss National Library, and also we did some initial modeling. Um, we, of course, did this more in depth. We implemented these uh, first steps in last year, during last year. Um, part of that was modeling, it was the ETL workflows. Uh, we set up the collaboration with Snapshot regarding georeferencing images. We collected geodata and we also onboarded the collections of the Stiftung Familie Filman, Filman family collection and had initial uh, conversations with Geneva and uh, Musée Art et Histoire. This year, um, and I think Florian will explain much more detail what this is about, we're um, looking or we, we, we are finalizing a, a project thesaurus that is a base of some of our uh, input forms. We're looking at the API development regarding communication with different uh, channels and partners. There's also development and implementation of the platforms and the didactic content that we want to show via those platforms. And we're working with adding information to the knowledge graph. So there's input forms created for that. And there's work being done around image cropping and image similarity. 
but let me just show you some of the current developments. Um, just as a recap, when you work with printed objects, you face a complex matrix of information and the visual or textual information on your objects might pertain to certain events or object types or even to people in different roles. And if we want to learn more about why the objects look the way they do, we have to structure the information in a way that, that allows inserting and retrieving information at whichever node is interesting for us. This concept that you see on the slide is the base for the linked data model that our knowledge graph engineers have created. And because we have this model, we can also start to use it together with all information that we already have as semantic linked data. Our researchers are faced with the very specific terminology pertaining to printing, but in all the different languages that the prints in our collections, in our multilingual collections contain. So you can have Latin, you can have French, English, German, Italian terms, or also, as you see on the bottom right, uh, commonly used abbreviations that often derive from Latin. And we've turned this challenge into an asset of our project, I think. The way we did this is that the researcher Michel Matil from the part project two has created a multilingual thesaurus using the tool ICVOC. From there, we were able to export it as a structured SCOS vocabulary with all the connections that are part of such a thesaurus. And using this thesaurus, Florian was able to build selective input forms for the roles of artists in relation to specific moments in the print production that you saw earlier. This form is based on the logic that the researchers use anyway. So reading a name means selecting a name and selecting the drawing event. Like here on the slide, you see the print term del delineat means that the name Winterlin gets attached to the drawing event in the graph. I think when Florian demonstrates this later, it will become much clearer how this is working in reality. Our goal at the end of the project is to run both a knowledge base, the BSO research portal here on the left, and a public facing portal with more curated information on the bottom right here. Um, also, this is where the didactic elements for students would get uh, um, created. And of course, we also work with snapshot portal for georeferencing our images. And I guess there's more portals that you could uh, include here, image servers, uh, Wikimedia, whatever. And this demands that we have to stable pipelines or processes, uh, communication processes between those respective workspaces. Each of these portals needs to be able to receive and send information. And therefore, a lot of current workforce goes into that. And you can see on the slide that, for example, between the BSO portal and Snapshot, we have a two-way exchange via API. This allows us to send images and metadata to Snapshot, where volunteers work on referencing, georeferencing those images, and then also to receive the results back into the BSO knowledge graph. And similarly, we plan to prepare a Sparkle endpoint for the public-facing portal to query information from the BSO portal. And finally, just a brief insight into an area that I personally find really fascinating, the patterns of distortion of artistic images when compared with the geographic reality. With the brilliant work being done on georeferencing by the snapshot volunteers, we have started to notice that the artistic landscape depictions have three main char characteristics. Features in them like mountains, trees, houses, or people can appear in modified dimensions some comparatively larger or smaller than the rest of the image. Some images do combine several viewpoints into one. And then there are also images where features have been invented for a better design or readability of an image, for example. Let me show you some examples of that. Here on the bottom right, you see some, some bushes, some flowers, and the volunteer in this case has left a note saying that they are unable to allocate or reference this foreground terrain. So here, our hypothesis is that the artist has created um, yeah, this like an entry into the image. It's an artistic element that makes the image function better, but is not part of um, the original landscape as, as you wish. Here is a 
example of a early Photoshop, a collage. Um, when you're in Zurich, you can see the Alps, but they're nowhere near as high as they appear in this postcard. And so even, I was actually quite surprised how many postcards do this kind of thing. They enlarge the mountains in the background. They show this aggrandized image of Switzerland. I guess there's also a political message there, a touristic message there. Um, it might have been advertising. There might be all kinds of reasons. That's the research that's going to be necessary in it. But you can start to see those patterns appearing. Also here in the, this uh, colored image, uh, you can see the mountain in the background. It is large in nature, but it appears larger here than it is on the 3D map. And then also what I quite like, uh, panoramas, where you have more than just your human viewpoint. We have some uh, an approximation of kind of whatever you would see if you turn your head to the right and to the left. Um, examples here include uh, looks upriver and downriver, or like here, um, Lake of Zurich. And there, it's, it's also some kind of collage. And here we're very interested, of course, um, what the collaboration with Snapshot will help us find out in the future. And almost at the end of my part, a word on what's planned for the public portal. Um, at the moment, my colleagues at the Institute for Art History, they plan an interactive Swiss map, which would allow filtering and displaying images to certain criteria. So for example, you could select a time span or a certain artist or a place or follow a specific travel route where information would pop up depending on where you are. Students and a general interested public should be able to explore the collections, interact with the map and written content, and learn not least about where they come from and about how much the landscape that they inhabit has changed over time. So this just as a very brief insight from my part and would like to hand over to Florian. Thank you very much.